YouTube, what's good? I'm back with another video. And today I'm gonna to be talking about how high school athletes can go D1. Now, specifically in this video, I will be talking through the steps that you can take, right around six of them that are really important, whether that be from mindset all the way down to how to go about the recruiting aspect, social media, et cetera. I played football, so I'll be speaking from my experience about being a Division One athlete, but the principles, they apply for all sports. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until then, I'll talk to you guys. All right, enjoy the video, peace. All right, cool. What's good, YouTube? So like I said, today's video is going to be about how high school athletes can go D1. All right, so I'm going to be breaking down these six steps. So go ahead and just walk with me. And like I said, if you guys have questions, go ahead and drop it below. I'll be sure to try to answer them in following videos throughout this series, Undrafted, where I'll be talking about my journey from high school player who was barely playing all the way up to now being on the practice squad in the NFL and further down the line as you guys continue to watch. So appreciate you and let's hop into it. So Step number one is that you need to know the odds and you need to set up for success, right? So in every single sport, there are odds and likelihood of going division one. It doesn't matter what it is. So if you're a high school football player, it's 1%, right? If you are XYZ athlete, it is an X amount of percentage. So I would suggest that you know these percentages so that way you can set yourself up for success. Most people go into, oh, I want to be D1. Oh, I want to do this. Oh, I want to do that. But they don't even have the simple framework as what is the likelihood, right? Because it's not about knowing the numbers, but it's more about when you understand the numbers, you know that it requires you to do something that's very different than everybody else, right? Because if you knew that the number was 80% or 90%, you could get away with a lot of stuff, but when your goal is to become a division one athlete, there are certain things that you just can't get away from. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to know the odds and set yourself up for success by setting realistic expectations of what it is gonna take for you to become a division one athlete in your particular sport. So if there's, you know, 100 or 200 or 300 different schools in your state, there may be a set of schools that are top schools every single year in their particular sport. For myself, let's say it be football, right? You now know that that top state, what's the percentage of those players that are actually going to go division one, right? And they need to start identifying them, know what they're doing, what position they play, right? This is setting yourself up for success because you can't just go into a blind saying, well, I'm just going to work really hard and pray that things work out. That's not how it's going to work. You're going to actually have to identify people who've gone before you. Look at individuals who've been division one, who are from your city, from your county, from your area, or from your state, right? And it may not be the easiest thing. You might be in a state or region where not a lot of division one players make it. Does that mean that you can't? Absolutely not. But you do need to set yourself up for success and understand the likelihood and the odds. Not to say that if you see the odds that you should feel negative about it, but the odds that you're looking at should allow you to set realistic expectations of what it's going to take to get done. And knowing that if that percentage was significantly higher, you could get away with certain things and you cannot get away with those things because your goal is to become division one. If that is what you say you want to do, then it requires that you have a different level of intensity about yourself. Number two is identifying that hard work separates yourself right now. What I mean by that is you have to do the things that most people are not willing to do. So when you're younger in high school, sometimes that is getting extra workouts in, getting extra reps, right? And what I mean by hard work is the repetition that you have towards your particular craft. So for myself, it being football, if I say I play wide receiver, I say I play quarterback or running back or O-line or whatever position I play, I need to understand that there are a set amount of skills that I need to learn and develop. The harder that I work at those skills at this young age is going to allow me to separate myself because most people are just going to do the bare minimum. And those individuals that work hard is going to allow you to separate yourself from the pack. Now, the craziest thing that I've learned about this is that it's not just working hard, but it's understanding what you're doing. So going back to previous videos where I was talking about how to get to the NFL, I think this rule still applies. You need to find mentorship. You need to find people who can train you and show you the way. Going back to step number one is identifying the odds and identifying others that have gone before you. So that way, you know, okay, cool. Somebody from my area went division one. What did they do that allowed them to separate themselves from the pack? One of those things I can almost guarantee you is gonna be that they worked hard. And we have four other different objectives that we're gonna be going through today, but I want to point out that you have to work hard. You have to do the extra things that other people are not willing to do. Because once again, if the percentage was significantly higher instead of 1% or 2% or insert your sport, then everybody would be doing it. And part of the reason everybody's not doing it is because everybody does work hard or does not have hard working tendencies, right? So separate yourself by working hard and going the extra mile. Step number three in the process is relationships and camps. And by the way, y'all, 
excuse my handwriting, it's not the best in the world, but it's going to get the job done. All right. So to me, this is probably the most overlooked and undervalued aspect of going division one is understanding how to develop relationships and the importance of camps and events. All right. So this myth that you can just ball out and everybody's just going to come find you and you don't have good relationships and you don't have camps. And we're going to also talk about social media and you don't utilize social media is absolutely false, especially as time goes on, right? Perception is reality. So the reason why I say relationships are important is because you have to know how to talk to the coaches and the scouts who are coming to your games as well as messaging you on Twitter. Don't think that you're too Hollywood to talk to a division one AA school, even though your goal is to go D1 and you may be a sophomore or junior in high school, right? Because that you not acknowledging that relationship may hurt you down the line just because you think, oh, well, I'm only waiting for the super big schools to give me an offer. That's not how it works. You have to develop a relationship with people. You never know where that coach could be. You could be a freshman in, in high school. They're hitting you up from some division one AA team. They believe in you. You never develop a relationship with them. Two years later, they're now a D1 offensive defensive coordinator or a different coach at another program. But you burn that bridge because you didn't value what they had to offer you because they were at a lower tier school. So make sure that you value the relationships that you build. Make sure that you stay in communication with the coaches when they give you a scholarship offer. Don't just take the offer and say, well, I'm never going to talk to you guys, right? Because you may be waiting for that big time school and they may never offer. Or we'll get to this. You may think that you're going to get a scholarship offer from a team and then come naturally signing day when they actually got to put pen to paper you now realize that they're not giving you a full ride anymore and they fooled back your offer because remember guys going division one from high school to d1 you got to get to division one just because you've got all this stuff going on when you're freshman sophomore junior doesn't mean it's going to pan out when you are a senior it's not guaranteed to happen people get injured people withdraw scholarships all the time coaches leave uh people that liked you in the building they leave things can happen so make sure that you value the relationships that you have now the next thing is camps now I talk to a lot of high school kids about this all the time. It's like understanding that you have to go to camps right now. Granted, if you ball out and you're at a really big time school, you may not have to. So let me not say it's mandatory, but I'll say for most people and probably the individuals who are watching this video, I will say it's important for you to go to these camps. It could be, you know, an Under Armour. It could be a Nike camp. It could be whatever camp down the line in the future. For anybody that's watching this, you need to go to camps and events. And what I define a camp or event as an opportunity where people do not know you for you to present your skills in front of them so they can either give you a scholarship offer or you can garner interest from that school for the upcoming year. So let's say you're a sophomore and you've been working really hard. You've identified, like I said, you did the first step. You identified the odds. You started to work hard. Maybe you found a trainer or you just started putting in work. And now you're ready in the summertime or in the fall or in the winter, insert your sport to actually start going to these events or start going to these camps and showcasing your skills in front of these coaches. What you don't realize is even if they don't offer you a scholarship because you're a sophomore, they're still going to know who you are. You'll be on their radar. So now when you ball out, you can send them your film on Twitter or text message or whatever, and they'll be able to watch it. Now they've associated you with somebody they saw in the summer, you develop. Now you have another year of film and then they may offer you a scholarship. And if they don't, and you really like the school, you go back and do it again, right? Because at the end of the day, the ultimate goal is we're trying to get to division one. We're trying not to pay for school. We're trying to leverage our talents and abilities that God has given us to allow us to go to school for free. So these camps are super, super important. Don't undervalue a camp right now. If it's a school that you may have an offer from, that decision is totally up to you and between you and the coaching staff and your family if you do want to go there. But I would say if it's, you know, you're getting scholarship offers from, let's say you got a scholarship offer from Villanova, right? Division one AA school. And then there's a West Virginia or Maryland or Cal Berkeley camp and you really like those schools, but you don't have an offer and you haven't really heard from the coaches, but you've been reaching out. I would say go to their camp, ball out, open some eyes. If there's an Under Armour event that anybody can show up to and it's, you know, tier one, because I know they'll have like step one of the events and then you'll get invited to the next event and then you may get invited to like the opening. There's all these different tiers, right? Or if you're a quarterback or if you are a basketball player and there's, there's showcases or if you do tennis or you play lacrosse or whatever sport it is, there's going to be these events you can go to where you can showcase your ability and what you you've worked on all off season and they can see it. And if they do or don't offer your scholarship, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you're garnering interest, right? These are steps to becoming a division one athlete, right? What you need to do, you need to develop relationships. So you need to communicate with the people that either offering you or you've been in contact with currently, or you want to get offer from, or you're trying to develop a relationship with, and you need to go to their events or showcases. So that way they can see you, they can teach you their technique. They can see you in their environment. You can actually see the school and see if that's a good fit because just because you like a school the way that they play or their track record doesn't actually mean it's going to be a good fit for you. You might not like the weather. You might not like the people. 
there's so many other factors that go into it. So that's why I think cancer showcases specifically at universities, but then obviously your large ones where everybody can see you are super, super important. So you can get a write up and all these things. Like I said, perception is reality. So if you go to the camp and you ball, some other team might see you, some other school might see you and say, Ooh, I heard about this person or I heard about that person. They did really well. And now you're just garnering interest and then you might get an offer from that. So you just never know but it's always good to go out and get exposure. Number four is the power of social media. Now, this kind of coincides with what I just said about camps and relationships, but specifically understanding what your social media is doing for you to become a division one athlete. So you've seen numerous stories and situations where some athlete had a bunch of offers and everything seemed to be going right. And then they posted something dumb on their Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, or whatever social media platforms are out at the time of you seeing this. And they lost their scholarship offers, right? People pulled out from recruiting them or they went to a visit and somebody recorded something or whatever happened, or maybe just an article that was misinterpreted came out about a certain player. Now other teams aren't interested in them because once again, perception is reality. And now people are judging your situation or what happened to you off of one thing that you did on social media, whether it was good or bad, your fault or not your fault, it doesn't matter. When you are in the process of getting recruited, social media is a very powerful tool. You should be posting all of the offers that you get from schools, tagging the school, tagging the coach and the person that you talk to. You never know how influential that is. I remember when I was coming out in high school, it wasn't super popular. Every time I got an offer, I used to say, bless for offer from the hashtag, put the pictures. I know everybody does that now, but that was when Twitter and everything was becoming more and more popular. It was a cool thing for you to be able to do to tell people, but it was also a marketing tactic for other schools to see that for people to repost it and say oh they offered this kid who is this make sure that in your social media profile you have your link to your highlight tape you have the best way that you can be contacted whether that be through email or through phone number make sure that you're checking your messages make sure that you're following all the coaches back if a coach follows you and they've never talked to when they follow you send them your tape and say hey coach xyz appreciate the follow check my tape out when you get a second they probably are, have already seen it but just send it to them just in case so utilize this social media in the right way now you can get in the whole nil thing there's all these other opportunities that will continue to come out for athletes in high school and in college but once again we're talking about getting to division one that's a whole nother conversation in terms of recruiting. So I would say utilize your social media. Don't let your social media utilize you. Don't just be on there scrolling and double tapping stuff. Really make the most of it. It was a point in time where everybody's profile wasn't available for coaches and you had to send out literally like hundreds and hundreds of emails to schools in the efforts that somebody would open it. Now you literally could just go to them, like it, comment, send them a direct message or send them something on TikTok or Instagram or whatever social media platform. And they're either gonna read it and respond or they're not. You know who it is. You don't have to worry about scrambling through a bunch of emails and it's really seamless. So make sure that you're utilizing your social media. Make sure that you have a clear picture of what you do, positions that you play, a little bit about yourself, a bio, like have it clean. Take care of your social media. Don't be on there posting stupid stuff. Don't expose yourself. Don't give them a reason to take your scholarship away after you've put in all this hard work and after you've been so committed you need to be leveraging social media instead of letting it leverage you. So we're gonna hop into our next point here. All right, cool. Step number five is consistency and timing. Now, this is one of those things that most people probably don't understand from a conceptual standpoint. Let's say in a scenario, you are a freshman in high school. You're killing it, you're crushing it. You are on top of your game. You're getting scholarship offers. You are the next best thing. But your sophomore year, you don't have as good of a year. Your junior year, you have you don't do as well again. And then your senior year is your worst year. So you went reverse order. Let's say all those scholarship offers that you had, now when you're a senior year, a bunch of people have pulled away because your film is not as good as it was when you were a freshman. Now, most people think, oh, well, I got all these offers when I'm a freshman, I'm set. And most people probably chill, take their foot off the gas, and they relax. But what happens is now when they are a senior year, those scholarship offers that they had are gone because they haven't put out the film when it mattered the most. They need to know who you are before you come and see them. They can give an eighth grader a scholarship, a ninth grade, 10th, 11th. You can give a senior scholarship up until his last game. From his first game of his senior year to his last game, he got worse. They may not sign you. They may not bring you in. And you need to understand that if you're in high school trying to go division one because most people will not tell you that timing is everything, not just in life, but also when it comes to going division one, because you could also, like myself, play on the freshman team, be a backup on JV, play your junior year. So my third year, I started, but really was not good. And then your senior year, all of a sudden turn up and get a division one scholarship. And you could have the exact opposite. And there's a bunch of different combos that could happen in terms of when you ball out, do you remain consistent? Do you decrease? Do you increase? 
They just care that months before you show up on campus, you are who you say you are, you are what your tape says, and that is all determined by the timing and the consistency of how you play. So don't think just because you're not balling out and you're a sophomore watching this video that all hope is lost, or you're a junior and all hope is lost. Because like myself, I was a junior and I was like, oh man, I just decided to start implementing these things going into my senior year and ended up getting a scholarship offer. Had I implemented these things the year before, who knows where I would have been or what could have happened, but it's all God's timing. But I will say, that your timing is important too. You need to understand that you need to be peaking your senior year, getting ready to go into college. If you're peaking your freshman or sophomore year, unless you plan on maintaining or just shooting through the roof, it doesn't really matter. It only matters when it matters. So timing is extremely important. Do not lose hope if you are a junior and you're not where you need to be. And don't get super excited if you're a freshman or sophomore and everybody's like, you're the next best thing because anything can happen. Anything can happen. And I'm not saying that in a negative way, but I'm just saying that you may have your best year you'll ever have your freshman or sophomore year. And if you you never match it again some schools may not offer you and that is just a part of the deal or the schools that did offer you you may not be as high on their board as you once were doesn't mean they won't give you a scholarship but it means you need to understand timing and how things work don't get defensive don't get upset it's a part of the process understand when you're peaking if you peak at the right time you're good doesn't mean that you don't ball out you could ball out all four years and just keep going right but if you are in one of those sticky situations understand and if you are on either side of the spectrum don't get too happy don't get too sad just stay even kill, keep doing what you're doing, and you'll be all set to go. So I think that's super important to remain consistent and make sure your timing is set up for your success. All right, we're going to hop into the next tip. The sixth and last tip is how scholarship offers work. Now, understand that as time goes on, there's what's called a national signing day. I know they have multiple of them for different sports. The timing of it is all different, but that is the only day that matters. You could do everything right. Every school could say they're offering you. It's just a verbal piece of communication that tells you that on National Signing Day, if it was today, we would give it to you so you could sign your name and come to our university free of cost, right? That does not guarantee you because they tell you that in May of your junior year that your senior year, when you do have to sign that paperwork, that that same verbal agreement is going to be there. It's not a guarantee. There's nothing written on paper to say that they have to do that unless things change down the line. If they do, ignore everything I'm saying. But as far as right now in 2024, them giving you a verbal offer does not mean anything. So that's why this is the last step because everything else I've talked about is so much more important because if you understand this, you know that those other five things you need to do, you got to stay consistent with it. You got to work hard. You got to know the odds so you can understand what other people did in your situation to get to where they are. You have to utilize social media, understand relationships, go to camps, keep your name in the loop. Don't just get some offers and then say, oh, I'm good. Eight offers when I'm a sophomore. I'm just going to chill. Lacks playing, making many plays, don't need to do as much. No, absolutely not. They'll pull your offer away like that. They do not care. And you have to understand the reason they don't care is because you don't care because you thought everything was sweet and you didn't continue to work. You didn't continue to improve on your craft. They're offering you based on where you are currently at and your potential for where you could be in the future, but that is not guaranteed that you will be there. So if you don't show them the person that they assumed you were going to be in the future, they may take your scholarship offer away. And you have to understand that. And that's super important because a lot of people don't talk about this. A lot of people just talk about, oh, I got these offers and you feel good. It's a feel good thing, but it doesn't mean anything until your pen hits the paper you fax it or send it to the team or the university or the school and you are now committed to them and you now have the paperwork to say you are committed to them and they are going to give you a scholarship so i need everybody to understand that's how offers work and i hope this video was helpful y'all like these are principles i'm not going into like you got to go here to do this or use this trainer maybe further videos i'll be able to break that down a little bit more but i think it's important for everybody to understand that there are six key principles that i just outlined there may be more if i miss some or you want me to elaborate on some drop them in the comments i'll be sure to try to record another video this is the undrafted series where i'm going to be breaking down basically for me the sports side so on this page you guys know i got the business aspect and i talk about sports and i talk about my journey to the nfl through trust the see i'm talking about kind of the day-to-day -day and the mindset side through the undrafted series right i'm breaking down my business uh talking about lead generation what we do i want this channel to just be about me and about kind of what i can give back to you all and i hope that it's useful right talking about mindset a lot of things that i i really just create content for what i would have wanted when i was trying to get to the lead. What, what would I want to hear from somebody who had been through a lot of adversity? I just try to record content for people in the future that may need it because the reality is no matter what we read that's written about other athletes or what they did or what they had to go through and they overcome, it's nothing like seeing somebody. Right now, it's 2024, it's January, in my spot, 
It's me and my wife. We're grinding. I've never been in a game active in the NFL yet. You go back and watch videos from three, four years ago. I was not living here. <laughs> Things weren't as good as they are now, I guess you could say. I wasn't in the NFL and I was in faith, in pursuit, in hope but we're here now. So I try to record this content for the future and for other people that need it because a lot of people just, oh, I, I did this and oh yeah, I had a lot of faith in that. But like, that's cool, but there's nothing documented. It's hard for me personally to read a lot about somebody without being able to see. And that's what this is. I'm just going through stuff that I learned as an athlete. I don't get on here and talk about stuff that I haven't been through or things that I haven't done or things that I haven't experienced. I try to get on here and share wisdom and things that I've learned in my time uh, on earth so far. So I hope this helps you guys. We're going to continue to keep pushing videos. But like I said, if there's specific things that you want me to talk about in an undrafted series, like literally just drop it below. It could be about football. It could be about sports. It could be about relationships. You know what I mean? Uh, being a Division One athlete, talk about the journey. If you guys want more stuff on the journey, just let me know. This page is for you all. That's literally what it's for. I don't ask for anything unless you know, you're a business owner and you want to work with us. But even then, I try to give all the stuff we do away for free to help. Because at the end of the day, that's all I can leave is, is my help. So anyways, if you guys need anything, as always, let me know. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I'll talk to y'all soon. All right. Peace.